Well, hello, beloved. This is Dr. Tuesday Tate, uh, your vision coach and life advisor. I am posing another thought to you that someone has sent to me, and I again told them I would do a video on it. What do you do when you believe you are waiting and waiting right? And again, I did say, I talk about this in my book. You're waiting right on the right uh, mate, on the right person. You're not out here dating 50 million people, you know, picking this one up, putting this one down. You know, this is not like hopscotch, right? You're trying to do this thing the right way and do it God's way uh, for his glory. And what do you do when you are in this place of waiting and trying to do things right, but yet you're not meeting the woman of your dreams, the man of your dreams, the person that you pray for and you're waited for. And you feel, you know, that clock ticking thing is real. It's real. If you are a woman who wants children and you're finding yourself over 45 and you're like, oh my God, when, how will this happen? Or you're a man who has lost a lot, but yet you still want to be in a healthy love relationship. The first thing I'm going to encourage you to do is while you are single, while you are without someone in pursuit of you or you coming into a relationship, what I'm going to encourage you to do is work on you. If there is anything, anything in you, anything in you that will cause conflict, trouble, challenge in you or in the dynamics of your life, work on that and get it right. Get it right. If you know you are quick to get angry, you're quick to snap off at people, to be snappy and short-tempered and mean-spirited in your words, work on that. Deal with that. Give that to God. Ask God to give you a gentler way of responding. This is men and women because Lord knows I I met men uh, who have smart mouths. I didn't even know men could have smart mouths, but yeah, whatever it is, if it's, you know, your spending is, is out of control, work on that, deal with that, give that back to God and ask him to help you to become a better steward. If you are a person that can withdraw into themselves and shut people out around you, you can't live with a spouse like that. You can't do that. If you're a person that likes being by themselves, but yet you say you want to be married, Mm, I understand couples need their alone time. They need their quiet space in the house, but you can't enjoy being alone, but yet want to be married. I like being by myself. Well, that doesn't coincide with having a healthy, godly marriage because you have to spend time together. You have to communicate. Not only do you sleep in the same bed, but Entering to your, your marriage bed should not just be to go to sleep and have sex. It's communion. Amen. It's communing with each other. And so in that space and in that dwelling, if you are a person who is, again, short-tempered or you know you, you have some other vices, uh, some, some things that you may be addicted to, you know, a, something, let, let me say this. Let me enter into this thought. I have often said to singles, if you have something in your past or your present that you are not willing to confide and share that with the person that you're dating and moving forward in into marriage, now I'm not talking about in your second or third date, right? If you have something that you are not willing to share, that you want to keep secret, you are not ready for marriage. You're not ready for marriage because marriage is about transparency. Yes, vulnerability, truth, honesty. And so if you find that the person you are dating and you confide in them something and they bring that back up at you in an argument or in judgment or to criticize you, mm, that's not good. That thing with being judgmental and critical of someone is something you need to work on before you get into marriage because your spouse needs to know that you're a safe place. You're a safe place. And so when you find yourself waiting 
and things are not moving at the speed you desire them to do, I just encourage you, work on you, work on you. Uh, I had someone recently say to me, um, they said they seemed to meet a lot of people who were deceptive, manipulative, secretive. And I said, okay. And they said what the Lord showed them was that there were parts of their lives that were not all um, above board, that weren't all honest and truthful. And there were some areas where they may have been being deceptive. And they said, and what I realized is though, I was attracting that. I was attracting that. I had someone else talk to me about they attracted people who were angry and bitter they, me, it was a gentleman who attracted women who seemed to be bitter, not so much angry, but bitter. And so we kind of talked through that. And what he realized was that he was angry. He didn't necessarily feel that he was bitter, but he was definitely an angry man. And so just looking at ourselves, looking at ourselves, laying ourselves before God, open, naked, unashamed, God, show me me, show me me. I don't really want anybody else to show me me because other people ain't going to be nice. But God is going to be kind. He's going to be gentle. He's going to give us the tools to work on the things that we need to work on. And so I encourage you in that. While you're waiting, just be encouraged and be of good cheer. If you know that you are doing the things that are necessary to be happy, to be whole as a single, and then just start speaking that to for that to be drawn unto you. Know what it is that you desire that you want, and yea, even what you need in a relationship. And while you wait, you work on those things. You work on those things. And celebrate those who have found good, healthy love relationships. I would certainly say as a Christian, good, healthy, godly love relationships. And so be encouraged. Be encouraged. We pray that the wait isn't much longer, but however long it is, You celebrate your life. You celebrate you. You work on you. If it's a degree, go get it. If it's um, losing weight, do that. If it's eating right, do that. If it's starting an exercise program, do that. If it's working on your credit score, do that. If it's saving more money, do that. Whatever it is you want to do, then you do that. You do that all to the glory of God, walking out and living out your purpose. Set your path towards that direction and watch God bring all that he has for you this season, for this day, for your life. God bless you.